Calimera is the only thing I'm going to say in Greek. That and Ecaristo, that will be the two words. So, first of all, I, I will try to speak very slowly. If you see I'm speeding myself, raise your hand and say, please, slow. Uh, so, I want to give you uh, a different view, so I'm not going to bore you with product description. As you saw in my uh, title of the presentation, I'm going to tell you about something that is going beyond the video. Uh, for many years and in many places, when we talk about security, we are talking about video. This is what the first thing is, is coming to your, to, your, to your head. Security, video, security, video. Okay. My first thing I want to tell you is that we all know that we live in a world of sensors. And if you don't know we live in a world of sensors, I'm going to tell you, you live in a world of sensors. When you drive your car, your car is full of sensors. Everything in your car is a sensor. You can detect when there is a, a, a pedestrian growing, going. Uh, the car detects when it's the light going down, so it turns the light of the cars on. Everything in the car is a sensor. If you go to your house, to your home, you have plenty of sensors. And more sensors, more sensors coming. If you go to the cities, the city is plenty of sensors. Everything in the city now is a sensor. So your life is around of sensors. So it's not a problem. Sensors is good. Sensors is making our life easier. The problem is that what do we do with the sensors? How do we manage all this information? How do we translate this information to be more predictive? And most important, how do we protect this information? So what do we see today? First. The threats are changing. If we look in the past, very, very, very far in the past, the worst thing that we can have in security was that the enemy was coming to try to take our castle or our city, and we start to build a lot of physical security. But the threats now are coming. We see how even the war is changing. We're not talking about someone that is going to send you a bomb. We are talking about someone that is going to do a cyber attack. We are talking about someone that is going to get into your systems and probably is going to try to corrupt the water supply of the city by a cyber attack. So the threats are changing. Another problem we have is that we have a lot, lot of sensors, a lot, lot of information, and this is making us less and less productive. Is making us more complex in the managing of this information. The other thing we need to do is we have information, a lot of information. We try to process the information, but we need to understand the information. This is another threat that we have today. And then lastly, what we have is collaboration. In the past, everyone was an isolated space. I had my, my company, my public administration, my whatever, and we didn't talk to each other. A couple of years ago, something changed, and changed very strongly, and this is the GDPR, the Data Protection Regulation. One of the first things that the Data Protection Regulation was telling us, you have to collaborate. If you have an attack, you have a problem, you have to share this information, you have to communicate this information. So this is what is happening today in, the, in, in this 21st century. And this is the common uh, challenges and trends we all have. What do we have today in our, in our uh, installations, in our organizations? Probably we have or isolate systems. So we have a video system. We have an access control system. We have different systems that, in the best case, they are connected. But even if they are connected, we have many, many challenges. 
And this is some of the questions and answers you should give to yourself to see if you are really, really well connected or well prepared to what is happening. So this is bringing us to a point. Why today, in the 21st century, we still have systems not connected, sensors not connected, if more than 70% of the activities are common? And if I go more to the security, and we go to the base security, we go to the video with the access control, with the reading plates, Most of the tasks that you do, or your operators, or your control rules do, they are common. You have to give operators permits and privileges. You have to manage and use different configurations, alarm management. You have to do things together that are common activities to all these security systems. And today, most of the people are systems that are not connected. Where is the problem when a system is not connected and we see before? The first problem you have is that you cannot have efficiency in your operations. You are not taking more productive, being more productive on what you do. So, what we try to convince the customers, and this is something that we see most and most, is that there is a flow, there is a way of working that makes sensing the different steps. The first thing, as I said today, is you have the sense, you have the sensors. And when I say sensors, think about anything that is connected to a net. Could be an IoT device, could be uh, a power, uh, power supply, uh, supply, power power supply, could be a temperature detector, could be an access control system, a reader, when you go to a building and you sweep your car or you put your finger or your face, whatever it is, this is a sensor. You have cameras, and you will see my colleague Juan, while you are taking information. So you have many, many things that are sensors. So the first thing you have is a lot of information and a lot of data coming into, into your uh, system, into your organization. You need to understand what information is coming from these sensors. What is this information? What kind of information I got? Important, you need to visualize in a very simple way so your operators and your control room is able to manage this. So you have to make the operators and the people that is taking decisions simple to see, very clear to see. You have to take actions. And I was, I was looking to the video from, from you, George, about the, uh, this fire example. Behind an event, there is actions to take. Behind the events and the actions, there is people taking decisions. So we need to see, and we will see there, we need to mitigate, we need to decrease the human decisions and make sure that we use the technology in a proper way. Okay? For many reasons, for many reasons. And we will see later in an example, but I just give you an advance. If you have an incident of a fire, if we relay only sometimes in the decision of a human, it could happen many things. This person could be in panic. This person could be new in the role. This person can have a very bad day, etc. So we need today, in the 21st century, we need to use the technology to mitigate the risk of the human decision. And what probably is the most important, to investigate, to know what happened, to be predictive. Security is about predictive. It's the same thing I compare with the insurance. Why do we have a life insurance? Because you want to minimize the risk, or you want to be sure that if something happens to you, your family, your dear people, is going to be covered. Why do we have an insurance on home? Because we want to be protected. It's predictive. It's something that you are taking in consideration that may happen, so you'll be ready if something happens. Or at least to minimize the risk and the impact and the causes of this uh, action, this risk. So as I said at the beginning, 
we go beyond the video. But Genetech is a video company. It's a VMS, video management system, with more than uh, 20 years in the market, 25 years, more than 25 years in the market. And it's a video system. Of course it's a video system. And we are very well known worldwide for our software, our video management. And we have many, many, many customers around the world using our technologies. But video is just the starter. If we go on the top, you see three colors. You see there a red color, green, yellow. Okay, the colors means in, in Genetech is to, to help the operator to manage the system. So when the operator has different applications and he sees red or he sees uh, green or he sees yellow, he knows that he's managing green is the access, uh, video, red is the access control, yellow is the LPR. What I, what I want to point here is that video is the starter. But you grow as you have more needs. So the first ring, it's the basic security. Let's say the access control, the video, the reading plate, intrusion alert, intercom, all the security systems you are familiar with. If we go to the next ring, you start to talk about operations. What are you doing with this information of the sensors to operate your system? And then if we go to the next ring, we, we talk about guide response. This is very important. This is what the customers, the users, public administration, enterprises, they want to do. They want to guide in the response the operators. And the lastly is the investigation. What happened? I know something happened, unfortunately. I try to mitigate this risk. I try to solve the incident as fast and as better as possible, but it happened. How do I do to minimize this impact and next time to be sure it's not happening this way? So I'm, I'm now in the half of the presentation, so now I want to uh, give you an overview of clear examples of what I'm, I'm talking about. So. As I said, to visualize and to operate is the important part of this. So I give you an example here, okay? This is a dashboard. Let's say this is a dashboard, let's start for, I don't know, could be a, a, a city. I want to point something about city, and this is important. I heard for the last years, and all of you hear about smart cities, intelligent cities. No. What is the city for you first? A safe city. Do you want to live in a city that is not safe? If you talk about Mexico, dear, or some cities in, in, in Honduras, they are not safe. You can talk about is the most smart and intelligent city you can live. Do you want to live in a, in a city where you are killed when you go in the street? You don't want to be living in a city. So I always said to the guys, the city has to be safe, friendly, smart, and intelligent. That's the city. That's where you want to live. So when we talk about sensors, you can use many sensors. You can create dashboard for the operators because this is, as I said, the operation. You want to create a dashboard that is giving you some, some information. Let me, I don't want to, I know it's 30 minutes, so I, would, I want to be short. So I put you an example here that will be very clear. This is, this is a ferry substation, an electric power station. Could be a, could be a water power station. It's in a, it's in a city. So, you have this here. You have some information about what is going on, but this is not security yet. This information is about IoT sensors, and this is giving you information like how is the power uh, station, how is the energy consuming, how is the water consuming, it's everything right. Then you have some information about that. By the way, this information that is not security, as we understand 
or safety, we take it from outside systems. Let's say you have your own system of electricity or water or traffic. We get information from there, okay? So, we have the cameras, so the control room can take a look, what is going on, okay. And then I have some information about who is in the, in the building. So I have total three people in the, in the, in the station, in the, in the substation, okay? So this is the information the control room they have. Okay, then there is a sensor that is telling me there is an incident. Okay, there's a sensor that tells me something, it's an alarm in the perimeter. By the way, when I was walking from the hotel to here, I went through the, through the parliament, through the, the, here, and I, I was thinking because there was some guy, some person, that was advising another person that someone thinks that break the bridge. He was telling him, oh, look, this person is walking. This is part of my example. This is the 21st century. We don't need a security or a person telling another person that someone is breaching in a place. There should be a sensor telling me that. Anyway, so we have a sensor. Then we have an alert. And which is the alert? The alert is that the power increase over the parameters that I have. So there is a risk for the people. It's a risk for the people, plus could be another risk. But let's say it's a risk for the people. So the system generates an action to the people to evacuate people outside the power station. And if you go there, we had three people inside. Now we have three people in the green area that is the safety point. Because there was a perimeter intrusion, there was an alert of the power high power uh, uh, temperature, and then the system launched the safety plan and is counting that everyone is safe because they are outside in the safety point. This is the operation. This is a very simple example, okay? You can take it for many things that you want to manage, but this is just an example of how do you combine different stuff. So let me, let me show you something. What about if we have a city? We have a city, and in the city, we want to combine different sensors, and one of the sensors is the weather. So the operator, the control room, they create their own dashboard, and they put weather information. And you will tell me, why the weather information? I will tell you why. What happens in Athens when there is a very rainy day with the traffic? It's terrible, no? Probably, if you know that with the weather it's going to be a very rainy day, you can anticipate that this day the traffic is not going to be very good. Okay. So I said to the system, tell me in a, in a, in a map, where are the more critical points in the city from 9 or for 7 in the morning to 12 o'clock? Okay. You start to paint that you start to get information from the sensors where you know where the traffic is more, because you have cameras, you have analytics, and, and my colleague probably will also talk about that, where you have more traffic congestion. Then you have some information panels in the, in the, in the city. So, okay, bad weather, terrible congestion day, what I want the system is to say, put me in the panels, some information about, please don't use this road, use the other road. Or, please, only vehicles with two people inside can go to the center, whatever you want. Then, you want to report to the management, or you want to report to the chief of traffic, some information. You want to say, listen, this is the, how many cars we have, how many incidents we have. Probably even you want to go deeper. You want to tell there are 60% of the incidents today is car crashing. Could be. Or 60% of the incidents, it's parking problem. Why? Because it's raining. Everyone don't want to use the public 
transportation, they want to use the, their own car, so probably it's going to be a parking problem. Whatever you want. And then you, have, you can also tell where are the emergency locations, where I have to dedicate from a civil protection my resources today because I know where is happening things. This is just an example. What I want you to keep on mind is that this is about, this is about sensors. All the information you want for the operation because what really matters for you and really matters for your, your, your environment is the operations. What you want to do with operations. And I also put an example. You, you have your, your intelligent phones or your tablets. You are not thinking about what the tablet or what the phone can give you. You are asking them, what do you want? I tell my phone, listen, I want an application to tell me when my heart is going higher than whatever because I start to walk. And the application should be there. This is about that. You have your operations because there is nobody better than you knowing your, your field. How do you have to operate? So what you are asking the systems is give me this information. I give you another quick example. And this is very, very, very interesting. You have your traffic information, but you want also to see real time where the cars are stopped. Or you want to see if there is a car in a wrong direction because you need to take actions. And this is one of the, one of the things I also, uh, I, am almost, I am almost done. <laughs> it's, uh, we all remember the COVID. That was a disaster. It was a disaster, of course, because there was a health problem. But I will tell you something. From my opinion, it was a disaster how all the world we managed the COVID. It was a disaster, totally disaster. I hope we learn about that. It was a disaster about information. It was a disaster about the rules. It was a disaster about how to deal with these incidents. It was a disaster. When we have the, 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 the COVID, as you can imagine, to all, all the colleagues, everyone was calling us. Do you have a solution to manage the people, to the temperature? To... And I said, yeah, there are many solutions. But the problem is not to read or to have the temperature when you were getting into a building or to an airport or to a whatever. That was not the problem. That was not the problem because if you want to measure the temperature from very, 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 very old times, you can first ask your mother. Your mother is the best person that will tell you you are high temperature or not. So we can put a line of mothers. No, mothers, ah, some mothers are not. Okay. Then I don't know how you say thermometer. You can put thermometer. Yeah, but thermometer. So we decide to put cameras everywhere. Everywhere you have cameras. But we forgot something. Once you have some wine with high temperature, what do you do? What do you do? And in most places, and most cases, and I have this experience in one airport, you create the chaos. Because there was a camera reading. The camera read you. You have high temperature. There was a red light. Everyone around you was like running. Why? Because you are high temperature, you are dying. Could be that the camera was not very well reading, and this happened. I tell you, almost 98% of the incidents were bad readings of the camera. But we put cameras as help. Okay, so when people came to Genetech, I said, listen, do you have a solution? I said, no, we don't have a solution. We don't have a solution. We can help you to take decisions. We can help you to mitigate the impact. So we did a couple of things. We, did the, we took the information from the sensors. And the information from the sensors was giving us some operations. Let's say you go to an airport or to a building and read that you are high temperature, probably high temperature. Okay. 
nothing happened, there was someone behind or in another room that will receive the alert. This is potential one. So in a very calm way, you just walk, oh, okay, now change the line. This line moved to the layer. Okay, because we put this person to another room or these persons to another room. And we start a process. So the operator, the person in charge of this, has a system that is telling you what do you have to do. So you go to phase two. If you are in phase two and you have already COVID, then the system has to do something. What is the first thing the system has to do? Give you or deny, give, take away all your access permissions. You cannot access to the building. So this is the first thing to do. And this is what the system is doing. It's taking your access to the building. Because if you don't have this, you need to have a human person, you need to have an operator to take the decision to take the access out. So this is the system doing this. So this is just a very quick, so this is how the system thinks, okay? It's just to show you that behind the interface, there is all the operation. This is the part of the operation. This is what the user is doing. The user has to think, how do I operate today? How do I want to operate? How do I transform my system? And this is part of the diagram. So this is, I'm a little bit out of time, so this is just, Statistics we got how many people were COVID, how many people went to the second level. You can get all the information because at the end, this information is what is giving you the predictive, productive, and to be sure you control your incidents. So, just to finish, this is the, the last one. It's very, very important that we focus all our efforts in the operation that we focus all our operation in investigation, that we focus all our uh, efforts in predictive, to be more predictive. And as I said, the world is changing, it's changing fast, security is changing. Security, when I start almost 25 years ago, it was mostly people with guns. That was the security. So this is evolving. And finally, finally my recommendation is that when you choose something, please think about future. Think about how do you prepare for tomorrow? Because the decisions you take today, and mainly in technology, is going to stop you for sure of improving, evolving, and doing more things. So it's very important the decisions you take today, because otherwise, and as I show in one of my slides, if you don't build something that is easy to manage, easy to install, easy to involve, very important, easy to protect, you are going to have a lot, lot of issues. So, Escaristo, and I think I was in time. Escaristo.